Yeah, not sure when we stopped recording. This has a timer on it apparently that cuts it off. Um, whatever. Okay, so there we go. We have soldered a ring with solder that we made. Now we need to clean up. There are a couple of ways you can do that. You can use a pickle. Which is a basically a, a minor acidic chemical that eats away at all the, the crap and scale and stuff that's on here and eventually breaks it all down and then it cleans it up um, but again we don't have that right so what you use instead is vinegar and salt put about a cup of vinegar in a, uh, a ceramic cup if you have it or a plastic cup so if you use a little plastic mixing cup fill that enough that you can cover this you know a book double that you can cover that so um, you know if you're using use a cup about this size a little plastic cup um, fill it three quarters full of vinegar and put some salt in it enough salt that when you're mixing it you know as you mix it it doesn't dissolve then you're gonna take a glass you're gonna fill it full of hot water and you're gonna drop your cup in it and drop this into that vinegar salt mixture the hot water heats up the vinegar mixture and acts as a pickle for this another way to do it if you have a little mini slow cooker, sometimes they you can they come with a slow cooker. Like I bought a large um, crock pot, and it came with a little mini crock pot, and that's my pickle pot. And I just use vinegar and salt in it, and it works great. Otherwise, you're down to files and sandpaper. Files and sandpaper work. All you do is you take your sandpaper. And you start sanding so you'll see on the outside of all of this is red so because this was made out of sterling silver as you heat it the copper starts to separate out of the silver and that's what forms on the coating here is your scale if you just use fine silver so I'm talking 999 silver you will not get this silver Fine silver does not scale. It will not scale like this because there is no copper in it or other materials to create that scale. So, in the meantime, start with your sandpaper and start sanding. I'm going to get it down a little bit. So 
So I'm just getting it to there because now I'm going to show you the salt and vinegar solution. Hey, here we go. Uh, it's been probably about 15 minutes or so, uh, almost 20. We're going to pull this out. So you can see it is definitely more silver. Uh, still got some black scale on there. Uh, but if you look, just let me uh, mix this around. I'll clean this off. So I'm just wiping this with a piece of paper towel. And you see that scale, all that black stuff just wipes right away. So when we look inside, uh, it's definitely less scale than there was. And again, in with the paper towel. And you're cleaning a lot of that away. So, now we want to focus on the joint. Right here's where the joint is. And you look on the inside, right, you can see where that joint is. So we want to make sure that's cleaned up. Actually, it's nice and flat here, which is good. Um, but we're going to take we're going to take some files to it. We'll clean up inside, we'll clean up outside, and then we're going to get this all filed so that this is an even join here. Remember, we're not talking about being professional. We're not talking about you know trying to sell this on the at a market or anything like this. We're doing this because you wanted a silver ring, whether it was for you or to give to somebody else. So we're going to clean up the edges. We're going to get all this cleaned up, and then we'll finish it up. All right. So we're back, and now we are here to clean up. So the first thing we want to do. Here. First thing we want to do is clean up the joint. The idea is to make it look as if there is no joint. You're always going to see a little bit of it, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you want to clean it up as much as you can. So this is where you use your files. Right. You want to get most of the excess flux and solder off of it. And in the process here, you are going to take a little bit of the silver off the top and, and that's not a big deal here. You're always going to do that. But you want that join nice and flush. Now remember, we still haven't rounded this off. So it is still in this shape. We can round it off in a bit. We can round it off now. It doesn't make a difference, but I'm doing it this way. I can keep this join nice and flat. When you work on the inside, this is a half round. You can use it. You can use the half round, the round part on the inside you want to try and keep it a little bit round. If this was completely round, I'd really be stressing using the round part of it. But where it's flat like that, you can use the round. Uh, you can switch to the flat if you want. It doesn't make that much of a difference. But again, you want to keep it. Let's see that. Oops. There we go. So that's actually turn it out nice and clean in there. How about that? A little bit better. And once you get that join where you want it, or where you're happy with it at least, then you can focus on the rest of it. So again, on the round, on the inside, use your round. On the outside, use your flat. And you're cleaning it up to make you happy, remember. 
if you're trying to sell this, that's a different thing entirely. You're going to be focusing on all the finer points. You're, you're not, you don't want to miss anything. You're going to take all your precautions. You're going to try and use all that you can. Um, but when this is just for you or just for someone that you want to give it to, you make it so that you are happy. And if you want to hide them, if you want to just say, you know what, I don't want to do that much work. I don't want to flatten that down that much. Well, use your half round and make... All right, so now we're still at this shape. Um, we got some of the filing done, but I want to round it out a little bit more and then do the rest of it. So to get it to actually, you know, be a ring, how do we do that? Again, if you have a ring mandrel, then you can just take your ring mandrel Put your ring on it, and then you take your mallet and round it off. Right? Pretty simple. It's really simple. Works really well. Then, if it's not the size you wanted, if it's too small, then you can just keep using your mallet, and you just keep hitting it around and around and around and around until it's the size that you want. If you don't have a ring mandel, mandrel, which, by the way, you can get these at uh, Michael's and, you know, online. Make sure you get a steel one, not an aluminum one. But you don't have a ring mandrel. Maybe you have a round end of your mallet. Oh, doesn't fit. Maybe you've got a cork. Oh, doesn't fit. And even if it did fit, maybe it's not going to work properly. I've got a file handle. Uh, still doesn't fit. Here is a dowel. Uh, it sort of fits. It's tight enough. 
now we can start. So let's get it on there. You see how it's fitting? Great. I just happen to have a vise. So then use your end. Again, wooden mallet. You can use your light ball peen, but you're just going to just light pressure. All you're doing is trying to round off the edges. So it's getting somewhat round. So now, let's go back to our wooden mallet. to round up the edges. Okay. So, now I've got a screwdriver. It just barely fits on the handle of the screwdriver. So we try it again. It's not going to fit on there. However, it will fit on here. So, now we try this. And there you go. Now, if you want more of a shine than this, if you want it to look, you know, if you want it to look like silver, if you want more work than that, now, here's where the rest of the work comes in. So, you have to finish your filing. If you've decided that you don't want to do any more filing, that this is the amount of filing that you want to do, you, you're done with filing. You can do that. As long as your join is filed, run your fingers along the edges, right? Because anywhere that's going to connect with your finger needs to be smoothed. So, take your file and go back over it. Get those edges smooth.
remember what we said about the inside? Half round. We're going to do it along the edges. it again. Now, now that you're round and your edges are smooth, now is the time that you want to start sanding. So, Grab your sandpaper, in this case I'm starting off with a 320. You can also use a Dremel, if you have a Dremel, go ahead and use it. Nothing stopping you from using what you have. So use a Dremel sander carefully. You will quickly grind away all of your silver if you're not paying attention. Remember, just because it works fast doesn't mean you don't have to watch it. So do the outside, do the inside. So here I'm just using my thumb on the inside. But you can also put it on that half round. Wrap it in. gives it a sturdier base. Remember, this is against your skin all the time. You want it smooth. All right. Same with the top. Go over your flats again. Your edges. And then Move on to the next one. This is a 400. And again, same thing. Use your fingers, use a half round.
600. And you can go higher if you want. You can go use a 1500 or 2000 or, you know, whatever you want to go on to. Do you want to polish it? We can go on to that next. Do you want to make it textured? Well, we can talk about that too. So, this is a basic matte finish with 600. Uh, it's not going to get much more polished than that. I mean, you can really start working it and try and get it more polished, uh, but you'll have to go, you'll have to start off with a 220 and really get it down to the baseline silver, get rid of all the dimples, get rid of all of that, and then slowly work your way up 320, 400, 600, uh, and that's the only way you're going to get a really, really high polish than that. So say you have decided that you want to texture this. So you've got your ring, um, you're going to need to put it back on a mandrel or something. So let's put it, let's put it back on our screwdriver handle. So a couple of quick taps to make sure it fits. So you're going to need something to hammer it on. Let's bring back our vise, but this is where we have to be careful. So, with the vise, just light taps. So you can see the dimples going in there, and you'll see it a little bit more in a minute. Turn it around. Okay, so we have another look. You can barely see all those dimples in there. Right? So if you want to see them more, yeah, you got to start putting more in. Whatever. So, where we are now, we now have a ring we made melting scrap from our house making our own solder um, in some cases making our own flux now here we are with this do you want to polish it because now we've got it to the 600 All right so we can quickly just run it over again with the 600 clean off. Now I'm going to use a, uh, use a 1500 
and not a bright shine, but you can definitely see the texturing in there, right? So if you want to shine it, polish it, now we got to move. Okay, polishing. Do you have a Dremel? Whether it's a, you know, a handheld one or you have a, uh, a rotary um, arm, whatever you want to call it, great. You can use one of those. Um, switch out. Take your polishing bits, any one of them, put them in the end, and you can polish. Don't have a Dremel? Do you have a drill? Same thing. Take your polishing bits. In this case, this one. We're just going to use a, uh, uh, I forget what these are called. Anyways, it's just a little spongy bit. Safety squints. Rouge polishing compound. Don't have a drill or a Dremel? It's a little more difficult, but it can still work. So first off, we're gonna clean off all the polish that we just did here. You can see, fairly shiny. Works better with a Dremel, obviously. You're going to take your cloth, you're going to take your red rouge, you're going to get some on your cloth, it's going to take you a bit, it's going to be like shining boots, that's basically what this is, this is a wax, you got to get that on there. So, try and get some on there. Race it on something hard. And polish. It works. It takes a bit, and you will have to do this a lot, right? but it works. You will get a polish. You will get as much of a polish as you are willing to put the work in to get. You can see the difference. That's the piece I was just working on, and then it's not, right? It all depends on how much you want to do. How much how much polish do you want? Right? Now when all is said and done, can you just go out and buy a Dremel? or Dremel-like tool for $20, $30? Yep, probably. Is that what you want to do? Might make things easier.
But if you don't want to do that, if you only want to spend or use what you have, well, you might have to uh, buy a little bit of Red Rouge polish. Uh, again, most hardware stores in the polishing section, uh, the cheapy stores, I think even the dollar store has them. But when it all comes down to it, in just a couple of hours, starting with whatever scrap silver you had laying around, and the tools that you had in your home, and was that the, no, you can barely even see that joint. You have now created your own ring with the basic tools you had. So don't say you need thousand dollars worth of tools just because you're watching videos that show everybody else with their mill and with their lathe, their ring stretcher and resizer and all of their bits and stuff like that. You don't need it. Use some stuff you can get online for your measurements. Well, let's, let's, here, even better. Let's give a check. So, what do we got here? Uh, what's that? 21 mil? 21 mil? Let's go. Oh, 21 mil. That's the right one. For the inside diameter, right? 21 mil. In U.S. Canada, 21 mil gave 11 and a half. We're going to cheat. We're just going to compare using our actual ring sizers. Uh, 11 and one half. 11 and a half. Mandrel. 11 and a half is about right here. Uh, you'll see the ring should be sitting over the 11 and the 12. Just past it. Right? And we did that with a piece of tape and this paper. So don't say you can't do it. You haven't tried. <laughs>